Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy and I own Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. Today is the second video in a little series I'm doing on just how I create my labels in Canva and then print them through the Maestro online labels site. <laughs> So this weekend I've been making some wax melts and creams and need to print some labels. So I thought this would be a good time to show you how I do it. I'm not really going to go over how to design the labels. I touched on that a little bit in my first video for the Canva video. Um, so you can check up there and I'll, I'll try to link it up there if you wanna go check that out. That goes more in depth than how I design my labels. And it was just a very, very broad overview of how I do that. Today's video is more how to take that design from Canva and then print it in online labels. Now I will say that I have the pro version of, of the Canva account and this allows me to have a transparent background. And you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. But without that transparent background download, you have a white box around your image. Not a big deal if you have a square, <laughs> but if you have a circle, it gets a little dicey not being able to do the transparent background. I think if you really tweaked at it and practiced your your design uh, size, you might be able to get away with the free version still, uh, but that is something you're gonna have to kind of play around with, and it may take you a few goes on printing labels just to make sure that the white square isn't infringing on the next label. So let's go up to the computer and I will show you how I do Canva and online labels. This is my paid version and I will I will just show you um, my labels and I will show you what a non-transparent background is going to look um, just through this paid version. But what I need to do is I need to create or print um, a circle label that is um, for my creams. So I'm just gonna do a generic one for you guys, just so you can kind of see how I do it. But my um, eight ounce jar, I put a three inch circle uh, label on top. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change this to inches and just do a three by three and then create new design. So when you do a circle design, you have a box. It's, it's not, you can't, I, as far as I know, you can't say, I want a circle. This is the three by three image that we are gonna create our label on. So for what I would need to do at this point is I'm gonna go over to elements right here, lines and shapes, see all, and I'm gonna find the empty circle. And I'm just gonna drag that over. Um, you can keep the circle if you want, or you can delete it at the end. But I'm just trying to get it pretty close to that three inches um, without going over. So now that we've got this circle and it's pretty much filling our, our image or, or designing space, we know then that we can't go outside in these corners, that this is our, our circle per se of our label. And that's why I always just outline it with the circle just so I know where I'm at. Another thing you need to do is make sure that your image or your important information is somewhat well within the circle. And so what I mean by that is if we were going to add a text and say this, this is our text, if we wanted this really, really close to this top of the circle, that may not quite work for the image um, when we go to print it out. Uh, so just make sure you, you give yourself a little bit of buffer inside the circle that we're creating just so that it's going to show up on the label after printing. It's just something I've learned that we do definitely want kind of a buffer around the, around the circle. So this is great. I am going to create my image again. If you want to know how I created my images, I'll link that above. But at this point, I'm just going to go to my um, folders and I'm going to bring up a real label for myself. So I'm going to come back over here to home and my projects and my folders. So let's see, I need to look at 
lotion and creams. Um, I like my folders. Uh, I am kind of a folder junkie, so this makes me very happy. At one point, I thought the folders was a paid version only. I really think it was paid version only, but I did find out recently that the free versions do offer you the folders now, so that's awesome. Um, so what I need to do since let me just let me just open this up and show you my design. This is my four ounce lavender cream. Um, this you can see I have quite a buffer around the image down here. I have noticed that if this is too far down, like if it was down here, it gets cut off of the circle. So I like to keep that pretty high. Let me just kind of back up so it's back in its own spot. Um, so definitely give yourself a little bit of a buffer, um, but this is my image. So now the thing is, let me show you how when you download this with the uh, not with the background. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. I'm not going to click transparent background. Now for me, once I download it, I then save it to my Google Drive. I save all of my images to my Google Drive. So I'm going to just go ahead and save that. And I'm on wax melt. So I'm going to go back to labels and find my creams. And then I'm going to do lavender test. Okay. So let's go over to Maestro. We've designed our label. We downloaded it. Now it's time to print it. All right, guys, we are now in my Maestro uh, account, and I have folders here too. <laughs> Lots of folders. Um, but here's my cream folders. And I only have five um, designs for all of my lotions and creams and circle labels for butters and all of those things. And I really, I could probably get away with three to do this. And I am going to... Uh, tell you why I do this in just a minute, but I really want to just, while, while I'm thinking of it, let's look at that um, non-transparent background and see what we can do with that. So I'm just going to start a new design from scratch. And that was, let's do a two by two and a half circle label. So two and a half circle label, and I'm going to go over to images let me get, and then I'm going to, I have folders here for all my images as well. Definitely, I just actually recently discovered that you could have folders for the images, which is huge. I was getting so frustrated. So I'm going to upload a new image and find my test, this one, and I'm going to bring that in. Now, can you see that white white box around my circle? If I brought in this one, it doesn't have the white box around. So that makes fitting it in the circle so much easier. But with the white box, what we have to do is we have to kind of adjust the size and you have to do this for every, every image, guys. And now we can this is fine, but this is the probably about the best we've got. Now we can crop it down a little bit. So if you click on crop image, where'd it go? There it is. And just kind of bring that in just a little bit, all four sides. That may give you a bit more playroom in in printing this, but you really will need to print this off a couple times probably and resize it and just see if these squares are interfering with the label next to it. So let's let's take a look at it. It's not too bad actually. I have a little bit of a squared off part of this, but the square out here is really not bad. So you might be able to play around with the size a little bit. Here's the thing. When you do a brand new design, um, you have to, I have always had to do an alignment wizard where it, it asks you, and I'll show that to you here in just a second, but 
every printer is off. The feeders are off. The, the, the width is a little, you, you just have to tweak it. So I'm, I was getting so frustrated with the fact that I had to, every single time I went to print something, I had to waste a label sheet just to do the alignment wizard because every single time it was just off. Um, I was getting really frustrated with that because I hate wasting. <laughs> I hate wasting. Um, so what I have discovered though, is if I save my design, my alignment wizard changes saves in my design. So really I rarely have to do an alignment wizard as long as I just keep reusing my design over and over and over. Um, now I, I will have a little side note to say that my seven ounce creams yesterday when I was printing, I did have to adjust my alignment wizard, but it had probably been, you know, four or five months since I did it. And I, my printer has made changes in four or five months. My feeders are probably, um, bringing the paper in a little differently. Everything is just a little shifted in your printer. So it's not like I never have to update my alignment wizard, but I can get a good amount of mileage out of my designs without having to do that alignment wizard every single time I design a new label. So my minty rosemary was brand new for my creams. I designed that yesterday and I'm now then able to print it and I can print it as many times as I want. Let me show you my um, lavender. I made some lavender and I made some uh, sea salt orchid uh, creams. So I need to print off some of those four ounce jars. I, pr I already printed off my seven ounce. So let's just look at my four ounce creams over here. And I do also have a tester, obviously. So this multi-design is where it's all at. So you come over here and you can see that I have 12, these are all green and rotating. I have 12 of my sea salt and orchid going to print and then sweet daydreams. Well, I, I don't need sweet daydreams. I need my lavender. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new design. So I'm going to come up over here and click add new design and you can name it. I do name it. Some, you don't have to, um, and so I, then it brings up the select your design. How many of lavender do I want to print? I need eight. So I'm just going to highlight eight of those. And I don't need that many sea salt and orchid, but I am going to print off some sweet daydreams so that when I am making those this next week, I have those ready. And that's what I do and as well is I'm thinking I I will hold on to my labels that I'm printing today, whether I need them or not. Um, actually, like my sea salt orchid, I made 14 of my four ounce jars, but I have ha I had labels already printed in my box, waiting for the next time I made sea salt orchid, so I didn't have to print off 14 here. I only have to print off five. Does that make sense? So I always have this box of continual extra labels because you. You really can't run the label sheet through twice. I mean, you could, but it jacks it up even worse. So it's best not to run it through twice. That's why I will plug in whatever I'm upcoming to make or, or just, you know, lavender. I'm always going to have a lavender guy. So I would probably just print off lavender if I didn't need the sweet daydreams, but I'm going to update the label and now we can print it. So I'm going to print labels, print now and get my label sheet going. Uh-oh, I messed up. I messed up, I need to add my lavender in there. Forgot to download my lavender. That would not be good. I don't want that tester. Oh crap, I'm in the wrong. Yeah, I was in my I was in the wrong design. I was in the two inch circles and not the three inch circle. You kind of get the idea. I have my sea salt. You can see when you hit multi-design, then you can see my lavender is now up here. 
This was my minty rosemary, and there's no labels associated. It's just in my uh, design, multi-design um, grouping. So let's look at my wax melts as well. Um, I think my wax melts may be off just one degree. So let's do an alignment wizard on my wax melts. So I'm going to come up here, save designs, wax melts. I'm going to open up my, I don't know, that thumbnail preview of this design will appear shortly has been there for days. I don't know anything about that, but you can see on this multi-design section, I have eight. I had as many, I think as 17 and then it stopped letting me add. So I can, you just can't put every single thing on here, but you certainly can um, uh, use quite a bit if you're printing a lot of different labels. But I do need my Black Raspberry Vanilla printed and I need my Tonka and Oud printed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those designs. And let's just do Tonka and Oud. And how many, let me see, how many did I make? I made 17 Tonka and Oud. So let's one, two, three. Okay, so that really only leaves one. <laughs> but I'm not going to waste that one. Wow, dang, I keep forgetting my thing. I need to bring in my Tonka and Oud. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to images. I'm going to go to my folders and look at wax. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my new Tonka and Oud label. Let's see, wax. And that one. And I'm going to go ahead and upload my black raspberry vanilla. I had to adjust that as well. So here's Tonka and Oud. Bring it in, maybe. There it is. And you just kind of bring it out a little bit. You kind of want that that like caution to go away um and you just kind of center it you can see that my white border around my logo is really close to the edge of the print margin so that's why you want to give it a little bit of a buffer and then i am going to add a new design black raspberry vanilla and I'm just going to give it the one and um, bring in my image adjust it you always have to adjust it a little bit that's pretty normal I'm just kind of center it up until you're happy with it and now I'm going to print these labels all right guys I came back down here because it's just easier this camera is so much better than my laptop camera. But the reason I had thought that I might need to tweak this a little bit is this outline on that label. And this side doesn't have much of an outline, maybe, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit, which is pretty normal. But when I was printing these earlier today, I noticed that this side of the page always had a a little bit of a bigger uh, line of the image still on the sticker paper. So I think the whole thing needs to be shifted a little bit. Like I said, I haven't I haven't done the alignment wizard for my wax melts in quite a number of months. So let's go, <laughs> wax melts down here making noises. Let's go back up to the computer so I can show you how to adjust the alignment. All right guys, so I just printed my sheet of labels and I'm going to go back over to the label designer and say yes I am having trouble printing and I am going to start alignment wizard so then you come over here and you create an alignment page and you print this all right guys ignore my mess down there but here is my alignment page and you can see that I was right so I'm seeing dotted lines on the left and no dotted lines on the right but the top and bottom is almost perfect I think the image could be shifted to the right just 
a half a degree and up half a degree and it would be perfect. So that's kind of how you um, look at this and figure out what to tell the um, the designing wizard what to do with your images from this all right point back up here goodness i am <laughs> i'm going to be out of breath before this is all over all right so we got that printed and so basically i am going to say that the vertical alignment is just a titch too low i want to bring up the alignment so it's too low because i'm seeing those dotted lines on the bottom but really it's only half I wouldn't even call that a full line so you can do a half so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next step and it's also too far to the left so I'm going to say too far to the left again maybe just half a step or half of a line save those um, settings and you can print a test page I'm not going to I'm pretty comfortable knowing that this is going to be fine I'm not wasting another page <laughs> just to confirm that. But I have in the past, when I'm very first starting with a brand new design, I will sometimes go ahead and, and print a second test page just to make sure I have it before I start printing off all of my labels. Um, a half a line or half a step either direction isn't a make or break for me. I, I could have gotten away with those labels as they are and no one would ever know this um but i just wanted to show you guys how to do the alignment wizard and now like again once i have my multi-design and i can figure out where i'm at with everything so i'm going to just edit my layout now i've got my tonka and oud done and so let's see how many black raspberry vanillas do i need I made nine, I printed one, but I needed two. So I need 10 to get me through what I have downstairs. There we go. So now my black raspberry vanilla will be printed, 10 of those. And then I also need, I don't think I have here, sea salt and coconut. I need that in there. So I am going to go ahead and add a new design just so you can see it one more time. And let's go ahead and print those off. Upload that image. Bring it in. So the square designs, they're not quite so particular as far as the transparent background because you're bringing it in on a square design uh, canvas if, per se. So it's really just the circles that that transparent background is super important to get rid of in my in my view but but i think there's ways you can you can work around it all right so now i'm ready to print it may work better as far as the alignment if you actually didn't go through the bypass tray that may work better i don't honestly have no all idea right, guys that's it for this Canva tutorial. I hope you got a little bit out of it. I hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions on something that you would like for me to bring you, uh, please let me know. I'm more than happy to do the tutorials. I, I, I'm probably not very good at it, but <laughs> you know, I'm getting there. It's it's just practice, like just like anything. You just, you get better with practice. So if there's something you want me to bring you, please let me know. I did have a request for uh, like a pros and cons for Canva. So I've started making some notes on that. Uh, I haven't really dived into the content planner that the pro version offers. So, uh, Keely over at Soy and Shea had had us was talking about that and it, it kind of inspired me to maybe look at that a little bit closer so I've been playing around with that a little bit uh, but yeah I love Canva for my labels I used to use Silhouette my Silhouette software and I used to print design and print all my labels through Silhouette and I love Canva so much more <laughs> online labels has a really good selection of of label sizes and I'm trying to get away from any cutting. 
I know I'll have to cut some, but I'm really, really hating the manual cutting of my labels. So I'm, I am kind of investing a little bit more in the pre-cut labels so that I don't have to spend my time uh, hand cutting all my labels. That's such a pain. Uh, so thanks for watching. I may bring some tutorials your way, give you that pros and cons, and kind of talk about the the Canva as far as my experience with it goes a little bit, just just as a less of a tutorial and more of just a discussion on it. That may be in the works, but until then, I hope to see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching. Bye.